So we're in 1 Corinthians 10 right here. And we have this great chapter here um, with Paul basically writing to the Corinthians. And he's basically comparing the knowledge, and, and especially in the beginning. I, I want to focus more on the, the beginning of the chapter there. Um, he's... he's Comparing things that, that the fathers did and um, basically kind of comparing the Old Testament with the New Testament and how the chil children of Israel just lusted after certain things and how these stories are, are examples that we have of uh, the children of Israel going after um, e wicked things. You know, we see God listing things like idolatry, um, fornication, uh, tempting the Lord is in there, and finally murmuring uh, against God. And how we should not be doing these things, obviously. We shouldn't be doing any of, uh, uh, of sort of tempting the Lord, fornication, idolatry. We, we're all very aware of this. But I think it all kind of comes together. If you look at... Um, uh, verse number 12 here, 12 and 13. Uh, let's look at verse 12 first. We see here it says that, uh, one second, I'm sorry. In verse number 12 here it says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. So, you know, the children of Israel were given their uh, uh, instruction um, by God through Moses um, while they were in the wilderness for 40 years. We see examples of the children uh, of Israel actively um, doing the will of God, doing the things that, that God wants, and, and then slowly you know, falling away from it and then coming back to it. And, and, and shortly thereafter... Um, you know, they, they pretty much, like I said, start doing their own thing, and then eventually they, they're getting punished, you know, for, for things like idolatry and, and fornication and tempting and murmuring uh, against the Lord. Um, and, and basically, I mean, what the Lord is saying here is, is take heed lest ye fall. So, so we need to be careful with the things that we do in our lives and... Um, we, we need to make sure that we're not getting too, too uh, boastful or too confident um, uh, and, or too comfortable maybe even with the things that we do. Um, and it basically serves as a warning, I, I believe. You know, take heed lest he fall. Um, let's read again. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth Take heed lest he fall. So even the like the thought of it, you know, like uh, you know, obviously we don't want to be sinning, but even the thought of foolishness is sin. So if we're thinking that we're too proud, or you know, we're we've got this whole thing figured out, well, God's got a real um, easy way, I, I would say, of humbling us. You know, we can we can be easily humbled by God, and, and obviously this is a warning. So let's read uh, verse number 13 here. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So if we focus on the first part here, they had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. I mean, God is telling us here that there's nothing new under the sun. You know, we all have lives. We all deal with things on a daily basis. And, and we all have trials and tribulations, whether that's just in our regular daily lives or, or doing, uh, you know, work for the Lord. It all comes with struggles. But there's a lot of comfort in knowing that it's all common to man. Right. You know, we all, we all, you know, sometimes we get beat down and, and we don't know what to do next. And, um, you know, like... You feel, you, our feelings can become overwhelming and, and, and take us to places that, that we wouldn't ever imagine. But God gives us comfort and he says, look, anything that, that you're going through um, is, is, is not something that's new under the sun. I mean, that's the best way I can explain it. It's all common to man. And 
if we read the second part, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. So along with you know, the comfort of it being common to man, you can, you have, you can have the faith and the, 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 the understanding to know that God is not going to put you through something that you're just not able to handle. You know, God is God knows each and every one of our limits. He is faithful to us. He obviously wants us to learn, wants us to grow, you know, and there is a, a fine line between pushing us and, and just throwing us over the edge. And, and God is faithful. He's not going to do that. And he's and he's telling us this here. Uh, let's keep reading. But will with that with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Well, so I kind of touched on that already. Um, so basically, I, I'm 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 using uh, 1 Corinthians 10:13 to kind of um, base my uh, entire sermon on tonight. And what I want to preach on is basically kind of really just kind of go over the basics. My, my sermon is going to be called Getting Back to the Basics. So I really want to touch on things like why we're here, what our purpose is, and uh, really more than anything, I, I want to motivate each and every one of us to, to uh, you know, strive hard and, and work hard for the next year, 2017. You know, we, we're, everybody's got New Year's resolutions and whatnot, and, and I think... I think we should all make a good resolution to, to work more for the Lord. So I'm going to try and show, show, show you guys what I think is important, at, at least to me, and obviously to, to God from His Word. And uh, let's just get right into it. So, turn, if you would, to Psalm 5. So, uh, again, with, with, you know, God tempting, or God put, um, basically um, knowing that um, uh, we, we all, you know, suffer temptation and trials and tribulations, um, he... And, and knowing that he's not going to put us through something that 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 we can't handle, um, it's really like I said. Uh, uh, what it comes down to, it, it's really just a, a comfort. And what I want, what I want to show you guys is is how, and I think we all know this is that. We serve a wonderful God, right? Like, uh, God is uh, God is great. You know, like thank God that He doesn't put you know me through something that that I can't handle. A and B. Thank God He puts me through something, and He's told me that He's not going to put me through something that I can handle because I can have the faith now to know that what He's saying is true, and just kind of hold on to that. You know, there is. A light at the end of the tunnel. So God, you know, God has a, a wonderful side to him, but there's also, you know, um, you know, a, a terrible side to him. You know, over and over in the Bible, we hear how God is terrible, and um, you know, he he has a hateful side, and there are things that God hates, and um, you know, with with especially the world nowadays. We have this tendency to, or the, the world has this tendency to just focus on God's love, right? Like, and, and it's always like, you know, God is love and Jesus is love and he forgives everyone and everything for every, you know, for, no, it's not actually like that. I mean, obviously we know, like, we know that, but we're all, we're, we're, we're the ones that are constantly getting bombarded by like the fags and the homos because we're so hateful towards them and they can't understand why, you know, we have so much hate towards them and it's, and it's really because God hates them and he, you know, so, 
We get this message from the world that, that God hates sin, but he doesn't hate the sinner. You know, God, God hates the sin, man, and not the sinner. I mean, how many, how many of you have heard that before, you know? I've heard that. Um, and, it, you know, I, I will say this, honestly, like for a long time, I, probably until I did this sermon, I, I actually thought that. I, you know, like even knowing what I know, um, it just, I guess I never really sat down and thought about um, that saying. And, and once I started researching what the Bible actually says about this, um, it was, you know, it was pretty sobering. So um, I had you guys turn to Psalm 5. Uh, look at verse number 5 there. Um, verse number 5 says, The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So here we have a perfect example of God showing us that he doesn't just hate the sin, but he also hates the sinner. Who shall not stand in thy sight? It's the foolish. God says that the foolish shall not stand in his sight. And the foolish are people. I mean, it, it, it's talking about people here. And he's saying that that they shall not stand in his sight because they are workers of iniquity. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Who does he hate? He, hate it. he hates all workers of iniquity. So um, here is a great example of God not just hating the sin. I mean, he hates, we, we all know God hates sin, right? But he's actually saying here that he hates the workers of iniquity. He hates the sinner. And um, it spells it out real nice here, you know. So the, the next example I want to turn to is in Proverbs 11. If you could turn there. Proverbs 11, verse number 20. Here we have a, another example is of what I believe that, that God is you know, pointing out that there, he's talking about a specific group of people here. So let's read it. It says, They that are of a froward heart are abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. So what... You know, what is an abomination? Uh, some, an abomination is, to the Lord is something that God hates. God, you know, it's an abomination. It's like extreme hate. It's not just like light hatred. It's God hates this. And he hates here they that are of a froward heart. And what's a froward heart? If we look a little bit deeper into the Bible, we'd see that uh, froward is just another way of saying perverse or disobedient. And ultimately what God is telling us here is that he hates a disobedient and perverse heart. And, um, and it's wicked. And, and he's, he's talking, again, the, the point I want to make is that he's talking about a specific group of people. You know, he's talking about those that have a uh, perverse or disobedient heart. And um, he's saying that they are an abomination to him. It's very clear and a direct example of, of God saying that he hates not just the sin, but he hates the people that have that froward heart here. Um, let's look at one more example in Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16, uh, verse number 5 says, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. So again, we have here another example of, of God saying that every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. So he hates every one, every person that is proud in heart. And they are an abomination to him. So God 
Um, God obviously hates pride, and we see that in multiple places in the Bible. And um, again, we're just focusing on this fact that God doesn't just hate the sin, but He also hates the sinner. And I believe, um, you know, we have another example here of, of God showing that. Um, this, uh, this is really serious, you know, this... This is a big deal, you know. I think a lot of times as uh, saved Christians, we don't put enough emphasis or sometimes we even forget of the emphasis that God puts on sin, you know. But, you know, obviously we're all saved here in the uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ, um, but you know, we need to keep a, a perspective of who God is in the forefront of our mind because ultimately it leads to the work that we do. We know that hell is the punishment um, that God has, you know, branded each and every one of us with for our sins. So we need a Savior and we need people to hear about the, the, the gospel to get saved because we don't want these people going to hell you know hell is is a terrible place like something that we all don't want to even imagine and, and you know I thank God that I can't I, I have sort of a picture in my head of, of what God of what hell is you know but that that's um, that but I can't, I, I've never obviously been there. I don't want to go there. I'm sure nobody here wants to go there. And I'm sure nobody here wants anybody else to go there. You know, so a lot of times, you know, the, the, the point I'm trying to drive home here is, is that don't let the world, um, you know, dictate what and who God is. Leave that up to the Bible. We have, we have the Bible here. We have God's word. He's telling us what it is that he hates and what he loves. And this is what we need to stick to. We need to always go back to the basics, you know, and, and kind of uh, and, and, and get in our Bible and read. So turn, if you would, in the meantime here to Deuteronomy 32. So God has, uh, I, I guess, in establishing the, the, the character of God, um, we know God is love. God, God you know, wants us all to be saved. But we also need to remember that He is angry and has wrath toward us when we ourselves are sinning even. You know, obviously we're all saved in Jesus Christ and He has a lot of mercy for us and He's not going to send us to hell for it. But there is a heavy weight on sin. And, you know... Um, that that that's the what I'm trying to drive home here in, in my first point. So if you look at Deuteronomy 32:22, the Bible reads, "For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains." So. Here, I, 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 this is like one of my favorite verses about, uh, about uh, God's anger because it really like it, it really kind of creates this like imagery in, in my head at least um, for what how how angry God is and you know like I mean can you imagine um, can you imagine being like so angry just in general or sin let's let, let's be angry with sin. Sometimes we're not even as angry with our own sin as we should be, right? Can you imagine, like, like have you guys, I'm sure everybody's felt like their blood boiling at some point when, when they get angry. And, um, you know, think of your, your anger being, you know, obviously 100% righteous and, and boiling to the, to, the fat, to the point where you're, like, keeping a, a fire pit going. Like, you know, like... Can you imagine that? I can't even imagine like myself being that angry and God is like kindling this place called hell where like most people are going, you know? It, it's sad. It's sad. And, and, but it shows the, the great power that God has and how serious He is 
about sin and the sinner and hell itself, you know. So, so this, is, this, is, this is a great verse um, that I like to go to to show people that, that, that God kindles the, the fires of hell. This is great. Uh, turn next to Psalm 21. We're going to kind of, we're going to read the whole thing. Psalm 21. Psalm 21, starting in verse 1. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withholden the request of his lips, Selah. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him. Even length of days, forever and ever. And his, glor his glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. So, you know, here in the first part, I'll just pause right there for a second. You know, David is just like pouring out his heart and being so thankful to, to God um, you know, for his, for his mercy and his love and ultimately his salvation. I mean, he says that here, you know, O Lord, in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Um, thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withholden the request of his lips. So David is just like, like uh, the, the way I can just summarize it is he's just pouring out his heart here to God. And then starting in verse 8, the, the, it kind of changes direction there. It says, Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, when thou shalt make them ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. Strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. And so we see here again God, you know, God, God's anger and God's um, how God is, is finding out all of his enemies, starting in verse 8. Thy hand shall find out all thine enemies, thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. So, so God here has enemies, and he's finding them out, and, and they hate him, and he's going to devour them here. And it, sh and it shows that here in uh, verse number... Verse number nine: Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in thy in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in His wrath, and the, the fire shall devour them. So, again, I'm just pointing out here uh, that 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 God God's wrath and anger it is upon those things that He hates and. Um, We, we, we see that there is a place that, that God devours people, and, and we know that to be hell, obviously, as well. Um, and so the, 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 what I'm trying to point out here with all these first few examples is, the, the, again, the fact that God has love and God has hate. He's a perfect mixture between love and hate. Um, I, I, and, and 
he's a perfect judge. Um, and it's, it's really a, such a fundamental a, a facet of God that he is a perfect judge. And uh, this is something I've, I've kind of recently acquired just uh, in my soul winning repertoire, um, especially with uh, Brother Robert. Brother Robert is a great soul winner. And one of the points that he makes so clear is that God is this perfect judge and, and, and we, we see that that is so, so true here with these verses because you can't be a perfect judge and not have r anger and wrath and consequences uh, and, 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 you know, for sin. And a lot, what the world will say is that's such a, like, you're so negative. Like, why? God's not this, like, negative, you know, God, you know, but that's definitely not the case. God is not negative uh, uh, necessarily about it. It's not a negative, it's not a bad aspect of God. Right. It's actually a righteous aspect right. and, and, and the world just kind of flips it around and makes it all, you know, like, because it's all about positivity now and, and, and we need to keep that perspective. The, the first basic is that, that God is a perfect judge. He's got this equal parts of love and he's got the equal parts of hate. And, and one can't come without the other. And it, and it can teach us, you know, as, as saved believers that, that, you know, we need to hate sin and we need to hate the, the, the people that hate God. You know, there's nothing wrong with with. with hating the reprobate that, that, that hates God and wants nothing to do with him and in fact recruits people to hate God as well. Like that's just wicked and evil and there's a reason that they were rejected to begin with. So God rejects them. Why should we, you know, invite them in? That, that, that's, that's totally against what God says here. So, so basic truth, number one is... is you know, God is love and he's, God is hate. And I've already touched on basic truth number two, which is um, that God, that there is this place of hell. But more so, what I want to get into is that hell is, is, is eternal. It's an eternal punishment. And, and a lot of times I think we also forget that it is eternal and, and, and we don't, put enough emphasis on giving people the gospel and telling them how to get saved, you know, because, because we think, oh, well, there might be a better time, or this just this doesn't feel right, you know, the situation's not right. And sometimes we forget, you know, like if we just remembered for a second when we question whether we should give somebody the gospel, that, that hell is eternal, and you don't know what's going to happen, you know, in an hour from now, tomorrow, you know, just when you're out there and, and preaching the gospel, we just need to, to, to preach to people and make sure that we are expressing to them and showing them how, how eternal uh, hell really is. And the, really, it just comes down to two options. You're, you're either going to hell or you're going to heaven. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, so we need to go out there and we need to remember this, this next truth here that, that hell is eternal. So let's turn to Mark chapter 9. And also keep in mind that, you know, hell, just, just, I'm just here to, to remind everyone, you know, hell is is a path to destruction and the, the destruction is hell, you know, and, and, and God's anger is what kindles that fire of hell. So, uh, you know, we want to stay as far away from God's anger and wrath. I mean, just, not just by not sinning, obviously, and, and following all of his commandments that he has for us, but we also, you know, obviously we're commanded to, to go out and preach the gospel. So we want to make sure that, 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 that we are focused on helping others. We want to be ministering to others. And this is another, I believe this is another way for us to just kind of get back to, you know, the, the core truths of, of, 
of who God is and what is waiting for sinners at, at the end of their life. So in Mark chapter 9, um, starting in verse 43, let's read here. It says, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if, thine hand, and if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For every one shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. So, so the thing I want to focus on here, you know, God is saying, you know, it, it's better... It's better to cut your hand off. It's better to cut your foot off. It's better to pluck your eye out than to end up basically in hell, in this fire. And, and look, he says it three times in verse 44, 46, and 48. Where their worm dieth not, and even before that, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So it's showing here uh, two things. You know, it's showing that their worm dieth not, so it's showing that these, these people are experiencing the, the torment and the torture of hell, and the fire is never quenched. It, it's eternal. So, so just keep that in mind. Um, hell is eternal damnation, and there is no escaping it. So, knowing these two things, right? Like, obviously, we all know here that God has wrath. God has anger. He hates sinners. He hates sin, right? Uh, uh, he hates all the things with perfect hate, and he loves all the things with perfect love. We know that, and we know that hell is eternal. It's an eternal punishment. We know that people that don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ are going there. And we need to keep those two things in the, the, in the forefront of our minds because ultimately, I believe, it allows us all to know kind of where we're going with it. Knowing that God has anger and knowing that there is a hell that people go to Right? Obviously, we're saved. We need to be out there and we need to be soul winning. And shame on all of us for not soul winning more. We all, we, all can, we all have all kinds of excuses for why we don't serve God more, right? And I'm not saying I'm perfect or anything like that, um, you know, but sometimes, you know, like when a Wednesday comes, Wednesday is like really tough for me because I go to work, I basically don't get a break, I come soul winning, and then I, I, I go through the service, right? So it's a really long day. So sometimes, I just, you know, like, it's like, well, I just don't want to go soul winning. I'd rather just kind of go out and get a, you know, get a, something nice to eat, you know, and just kind of relax, let my day go by. But no, like, I want to make sure that I'm always there on Wednesday because I, I, I just, I'm always focused on the fact that people, there's people out there that need to hear the gospel. And, 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 and but we all need to do it more. And then when Sundays come around, you know, like, Sunday is like, I mean, you just want to sit and relax and, and not do anything else, right? And, 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 and if, it, it, you know, the fl our flesh is telling us that it feels good. You know, we want to we unwind from the week. You know, we've already gone to church. We've done our due diligence, right? But, but we have to go soul winning. Soul winning is, is like our number one purpose as a Christian. And, and, and there's no point in any of us being saved if we can't share that with anybody. You know, like it, it's our job to minister to others. The best way to minister to somebody is to go out soul winning, preach, 
you know, you can preach on Facebook, you can preach, you can preach anywhere. Just explain people, use the Bible, explain to people what the gospel is, and, and, and basically know, knowing the, these two truths about God's anger and hate uh, towards sinners and, and the fact that hell is an un, un, unquenchable fire, like, we got to ask ourselves, what are we going to do about it? You know, what are we going to do about it? So the, this last part, I really just want to focus on um, going over like things that, that, that can hopefully help, help us all to, um, you know, make soul winning a priority and basically keep soul winning at the top of our focus and, and prioritize our lives around soul winning and serving God and, and, and doing just in general more for God and, and doing it on kind of a long-term basis, you know, because, you know, from week to week things can vary and one week you'll feel like really zealous for God and then a week later, at least I do, like I'll, I'll feel really tired and I, I just kind of try and push through it, but it's all about balance. So, so the first, one of the first things that, that we can do, I believe, is, is, Set just set some goals. You know, we had a goal of a um, hundred salvations for the year. I'm sure Pastor Burzins is going to up that to two hundred. You know, we got so many people now. We got so many great people here that that know what it takes to get saved and are zealous for the Lord and want to do the right thing. So we just got to set some goals and and stick to them. The, the being diligent and um, you know. Just, just getting back to remembering what our purpose is. And, and if, we, if we read again, uh, I'd like to read again uh, 1 Corinthians 10. Uh, there hath no temptation you taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way for you to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So just keep that in mind. Keep in mind that God is faithful. God will get you through your trial and your tribulation. And, and God wants us all to do what's right and preach the gospel. And uh, sometimes, you know, one of the best ways that, that we can remember that we have faith and, and just kind of, you know, just talk to God is, is do that in general. And just, just pray, right? We can, we can pray. When, when we pray... You know, it, it, we can pray for anything. We can pray for boldness. We can pray for um, the right words to speak. We can pray for better time management. We can pray for getting the sin out of our life. And look, here, here's the thing. You know, with God, when, when God sees that you're making this effort to pray more and to read the Bible more and study and you and you're want to go and you have this heart to go soul winning and doing the right thing, God will open up doors for you. And I experienced this, uh, you know, myself because when I first got saved, I started going to, to Faithful Word and... I wasn't a soul winner. I had no idea what a soul winner was. And, you know, slowly, actually pretty quick, uh, going to Faithful Word, you find out quickly that it's a soul winning church and that it's really important and that we all should be go going soul winning. And, um, and I knew that, right? And I, and I really took that to heart and, and I wanted to go soul winning, but I was so, like, I was scared. Like, I didn't want to talk to people. I didn't want to knock on their door. I had no idea what was going to happen. And we, I think we all kind of experienced this as a new soul winner, you know? Like, you go through the, all these scenarios in your head of what could happen when, when that person opens the door, you know? And it's like, are they going to be pointing a gun at you, you know, right? And no, it's not even like that, you know? Like, it has, that, that's not even close. So for, like, the first six months uh, 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 of going to church, like, continually... And even at first, I wasn't going, you know, every day. And then slowly, it just became like, you know, I was there every Sunday morning at first. Then I was there Sunday and, and Sunday evening. And then I was there Wednesday, Sunday morning, Sunday evening. It didn't matter what is going on. I'm going to church. And, and see, I think God slowly kind of 
opened doors for me. He wanted me to go to church, learn more, learn, be, get confident with, with, with the gospel. Be, and then so I started going out soul winning. Every Wednesday I would go out soul winning. And I didn't say anything for like six months. You know, and, and this kind of leads me to my next point. You know, we, we, we can set goals, we can pray, um, but really, like, I, I think like 80% of it is just, let's just show up. You know, you can come to soul winning and not say a word. And I, I'm a perfect example of that. I probably didn't, I didn't learn how to soul win until I actually came up here. And I was like, you know, like, I, 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 was, I was pushed by God into it, you know. Slowly God was working in me, and, and he wanted me to do this. And um, let's um, turn, if you would, right now to Romans 1. Uh, so, so showing up is, is, is just a big thing. You know, when you're in school, as a, like when I went to grade school, and, and I would always get the like, award for, yeah, attendance. Yeah, attendance award. And, and it was literally because my parents like, kicked, me, kicked me out. They're like, you're going to school. And that's it, you know, like I, I really didn't have a choice. And, but, but, you know, I, I, I praise God for that, you know, because I, I, now I, I, I make it a point to show up. And when I decide that I'm going to show up to something, it's just like, I mean, there's no, there are trials and tribulations, but there's no question in my mind whether I'm actually going to be there. I'm just going to show up and whether I actually do something, you know, like soul win and talk to people. I, I didn't know that, like I said, for like the first six months of soul winning. So um, look at Romans 1 here real quick. We're almost done. Um, starting in verse number 14, it says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, it, or so... As much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So this is kind of like my, my last point. Uh, you, you, know, you want to set goals. You want to... Um, you know, and, and set long-term goals. You want to pray about it. You know, prayer, I think, is often times we, uh, you know, um, don't, don't give an prayer enough value, you know. Like, at, at least, you know, for me. Uh, and I think we can always, see, w with any of these things, even if, you're, if you feel like, well, he's just telling me something that I already know and I'm already doing the most. There's something on this list that we can do more. You know, and ultimately, the more we do, the more we can do. You know, the, the, more, the more time you, you, you use wisely in your time management skill, you, the more you will get done eventually. I, I don't know if that makes sense or if I'm explaining it the right way. But, but here in Romans, um, we see Paul, um, you know, talking, uh, talking to the Romans. And, and the, the thing he says here, which, which is great, I think, in, in, in verse number 15, he says, I am ready to preach the gospel. We could be ready. And how can, be, how can we be ready? Well, we can be ready by setting goals. We can be ready by coming to church, understanding more of, uh, of the gospel, you know, or more of the Bible in general. Um, uh, and we can, you know, kind of kill two birds with one stone. We can study, study the Bible and we can come to church because God commands us to come to church. And, and learn and understand about, about God and, and be more ready. See, when you're more ready, you're more confident. And when you're more confident, you're just ready to just preach the gospel to anyone. And, and that is the ultimate goal. I mean, you see somebody walking down the street, it doesn't matter how your day is going, go talk to that person and at least try to give them the gospel. You know, that's the goal. We should be preaching the gospel to every creature. And so, basically that's what it comes down to. Um, 
you know, obviously, like I said, uh, Hebrews 10, 25 says, um, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So with this, uh, you know, coming to church and seeing all these people that are zealous for God around you, it, 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 it inspires you. It, it makes you want to do more for the God. For God, you, you see, you see other people going out soul winning. You should want to go out soul winning. You see other people uh, doing the the Bible memorization. You should want to do that. You know that is the right heart and the right attitude to have. Right. And and the the better your attitude is, the 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 more God is going to start opening up all these doors and, and just laying things out for you. And it'll be real clear, you know. You're, you're going to see somebody walking down the street and it's not going to be like, well, should I? It's, it's not the right moment. Should I talk? It's going to be like, no, I'm going to talk to this person right now. And it doesn't matter what's going on, you know. So, so that, hopefully I've given you guys, you know, some tools there. Or, or if anything, just kind of things that, that, that we know but, but kind of needed to remember. And, um, you know, it's, it's all about just going back to the basics. Try to keep in, in, in mind that, that God, God does hate sin. He hates sinners when they're sinning. And, you know, that sin is ultimately going to, to, to put people to hell, you know, like, and, and, and be a part of God's anger. And obviously, you know, we want... God to save us. We need Jesus Christ. We want to preach the gospel to every creature. And, um, you know, hopefully I've, I've given you some tools at least to be able to, to, to remember what to do. Uh, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you know, I, I, I thank you, Lord, for um, your great truths in the Bible. Um, knowing that our trials and our, our temptations are common to man and that we can have the faith in, in knowing that you're not going to put anything that, um, that, that in front of us that we can't get through. And, and you're faithful. You're going, you're gonna, it, we, as long as we show a willing and, and cheerful heart to serve you, Lord, you're there to, to give us what, everything that we need. And, and I pray, I praise you for that and, and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.